Well, welcome to JMC Live. We have a special, special evening tonight. We have Kingdom Builders International in the house. Uh, we have Patty on the left, Jude on the right. <laughs> and uh, I'm coming to you tonight, for, as always, on a Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, I wanted to start off with uh, the foundation, uh, Kingdom Builders International. Let's start with, with Patty and explain where's the beginning of this. How, how do we get to where we are now, which where people don't know quite yet, but that's what I'm looking for. Okay, well in 1997 I was invited to go on a mission trip to Haiti and um, our church was gone. We were going to build a church there and um, I wanted to go. My kids wanted to go. My husband didn't, but I won. So we all ended up going. Um, we spent a week in Haiti. Uh, about the middle of the week the Lord just started um, just speaking to both of our hearts. And we got such a desire to serve him and to serve the people of Haiti that six months later we had raised all of our money. We would sold our house and all our possessions. And we were living in Haiti along with our 14-year-old daughter, Lindsay. That, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. So what was that like, having to start off in, in Haiti and what... What did that feel like, you know, just, just coming in the airport and, you know, the, the mindset. I mean, how do you grasp, I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> well, our, our first trip in, um, I didn't know if I was going to make it for the whole week. It was that bad. When I got um, outside the airport, it was so hot. Um, everybody was speaking Creole, and, they, and the Haitian people speak loudly. They all sound like they're fighting. So, you know, you have all these people, you know, talking loudly. They're all trying to grab your bags at the airport. Um, I was kind of scared. And then um, they load us, loaded us up into a cattle truck, and there were 30 of us there. So we were all piled in the back of this cattle truck, and we started out of Port-au-Prince, and then the, the smells hit us, the suit, raw sewage and um, the trash burning, all that kind of stuff. And I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done, you know. I'm never going to hear the end of it from Randy because he didn't want to go. So, um, that was that was difficult. But like I said, the middle of the week, you know, God's just changed everything. And once your heart's changed and you're ready to serve the Lord, your surroundings don't matter. So when we went back six months later in July, it was even hotter than when we'd gone in December. But we were so excited to be there that... You know, it didn't matter if we didn't have running water or electricity or, you know, if we were eating rice every day. We were just excited. So what all encompasses with the ministry in Haiti? What what all do you actually help out with? I see you know, photos of medical work and, and I'm hearing things about orphans. And Can you explain to us what Kingdom Builders does as a yeah. whole? In the, in the past, we have planted churches and schools. Um, we've done medical outreach um, programs to our churches and schools and into communities that um, needed medical care. All of it was free. The medications were free, everything. Um, at this time right now, we are focusing just on feeding people because, you know, they've all lost their homes. They've lost everything they have. So um, that's our main goal right now until we can better see how we're going to be needed. And um, in talking to the Haitian people that, that we have on the ground there that we're still working with, they think in about six months after, you know, some of the big organizations leave and all the people that rushed in to help, when they leave, they think we'll better be able to tell, you know, what we'll really need to start doing. And they said that's already starting to happen already. It is, yeah. So, um, well, when it comes to the food, uh, what... I know the last time I heard Randy speak, he was talking about that it wasn't necessarily um, non-perishable goods and already cooked meals were important, but to actually educate and train or provide the ability to farm and stuff. But where do you see that going now after this devastation? That's still the plan, or because it looks like there's not many <laughs> places you can do I, much. There's not. There are a lot of organizations. I think bigger organizations that can focus more on that. Mm -hmm. I think um, probably where our focus is going to have to go 
um, just from past experience and everything. I think it's probably with getting some schools built, getting some medical clinics built, and probably, you know, sadly, some orphanages. So I think that's going to be our main focus. So um, let's talk about Jude. Let's give, let's let, uh, let's uh, tell everybody, how did Jude become a part of your family? When Randy and, and Lindsay and I moved down there, um, we met Jude on our first trip. He was um, living on a mission compound at that time. And then when we moved down six months later, um, the person who was running that compound left Haiti, left him in charge of a, a Haitian man there. And um, he in turn didn't take care of Jude. So Jude was out on the street for about a year and a half. And um, we finally, we had to fight for custody of him for about a year and a half. And finally the Haitian man agreed to let us have custody. And at that time he was 10 and we brought him back into our home then. So wow. haven't let him go since. What, what memories do you have of um, first meeting Patty and Randy and them taking you in. Okay. Um, well, before they um, took me into their home, um, like she said, I met them on the mission field, and um, I was the always the hyper kid and always stick around with them wherever they went. I wanted to go, and um, I was always the uh, bester kid. I was always frustrate the people and it's just I like to hang around with them and um, then um, when before that um, after I was living on the streets by myself um, I prayed a lot um, for God to give me a better better parents and new parents and uh, when that finally happened you know I was happy that um, they decided to take me in because it was like um, God answered my prayers, and um, when I moved in with them, I was happy, I was comfortable with them, and um, they took care of me like um, parents take care of their kids, and I was comfortable, and I was good. <laughs> um, what would you, uh, th there's been a lot of uh, children really quickly adopted from Haiti, um, because of the devastation um, and some some people have been in trouble because they've taken children and um, and recently one one child that was taken here uh, their parents are alive and they're you know they're having to send them back um, what kind of uh, did you run into any problems uh, when you were going through the adoption process with Jude uh, what did you face? Because uh, I've heard you tell us a little bit of things that you faced. Shots oh to the my gosh, and... let's start. Um, actually, we've never got him legally adopted because of all the problems we ran into. Um, uh, the first the first time, they just lost his paperwork. Just mm. lost it. Couldn't find it. And they didn't care, even though we had copies. They didn't care. They wanted the originals and they didn't have them, so we had to start the process all over. Um, the second time um, was when the revolution broke out, and so all the papers were burned in, you know, in the downtown government buildings. So once again, they didn't care that we had our own copies. Yeah, it was, wasn't any good, so we had to start all over. And in that process, um, it was taking so long and they'd lose things and we'd have to redo things and mm -hmm. um, he old. just got too old oh my goodness so. okay well we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more with you guys about Haiti and then we'll uh, talk about your work in Uganda and Jamaica as well